Wendy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So today I am doing part number eight of the Traveler's Notebook Make Along with Wishes and Weeds. Um, and we're doing the last two pages now. Um, so let's get started. So this is pages three, four, 53 and 54. Um, so this one is pretty easy. Again, I'm making two of these journals. So that now we're just looking at my prototype, um, the one that I made while I was watching her video and I made it along with her, um, which I definitely recommend. It's a lot of fun and she gives you a, like really good spaced timing. This is her tutorial, not mine. So I'm not really doing this in tutorial fashion necessarily. Um, <clears throat> so for this page three, the brief was to create a bottom, a, a tab on the bottom with some fabric and lace and um, add some buttons and so that is my bottom tab <clears throat> and this is a book page that was the other part of the brief to use a book page and um, I just used this is just a book page um, from a large um, art review book um, and so it's just kind of like um, fancy sort of um, living room like a french kind of boudoir or something um let me see it tells me yeah, it's like a henry the eighth kind of themed bedroom so um and then on the back it's got just more kind of classic imagery black and white and then the other part of this is on page so this was on page three Page four, we do nothing. Page 53, you add a top tab, same thing, lace, fabric, and a button. And I use this cute yellow vintage button. And um, then this flip over, I left it this way. You could have it either way, but I want this one to flip in because the last one flipped out. And that's all we do with this one. So let's get started. <clears throat> and then I'll show you the other page after that. So. This book page is the one I'm choosing today. And let me get all of the rest of my materials here. So that's one button. <clears throat> Fabric for one of my tabs. Um, here's another button. Let's make sure I've got everything here. for the other part. Okay. There's my other buttons. All right. So I think I actually only grabbed fabric for one of these. So let me grab some for another one. Uh, just double checking through my stuff. Nope. Okay, that's all for the next page. So let's grab another piece of fabric um, for this. So I think for what we'll do first is we'll we'll um we'll fold the page. So I already trimmed this page down to the size of my my guide here. Um like lengthwise anyways. Um, so this is another page from the same book, but it's very different. It's from an art review magazine book. Um, so let's just do this <clears throat> and use my guide here and flip this over this way. Fold. And then um, the excess piece, we'll just fold this way. And I think I want this one to go this way. So there we go. That's how you get your paper started. Then um, let me just check here. Okay, so here is what I'm going to use as my fabric. And my, I'm not using a lace lace, I'm using kind of more of a ribbon. So just put some glue here. Glue on here. A little more there. I'm going to stitch this. I'm just kind of superficially gluing it down too so that it's glued down. I'll just run the ribbon over it the same way. There we go. And then I'm going to do my top tab also. Um, so I'll just set my buttons aside over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am like 
My throat is all gargly today. I don't know why. Okay. I'm just going to stick with the yellow theme <laughs> that I'm going with here and grab a piece of this. Rip. <laughs> and right here is all I'm going to need. That. And then I do have some lace over here. Give me one second. I just want to grab a piece of this lace. Okay. So now it's time to do our stitching. So let me bring machine over here. And I think we will use a zigzag. threads a little bit here. I don't mind having a little bit hanging. I kind of like a little bit there. So there we go. We've got our two tabs. Um, then I need my needle and thread to sew on some buttons. So what I was thinking is using this one. Now it has a little wire in it. Let me see if I can find Keep a little pair of pliers around just for things like this when you've got these little pieces of wire in your vintage buttons just to take them out. <clears throat> I'm going to pop this one right here. I'm just going to put the needle in the front and pull the knot to the front. And if you wanted to hide the, like every bit of your thread, you could do so by um, <clears throat> stitching a button on the back too, and actually just going through a button on each side. Then you tie your knot, you hide it under your button at the back. That's how a lot of coat buttons are sewn on. You'll often notice that you've got like your fancy heavy coat button on the outside of your jacket. And then on the inside, you have a little button that's like a reinforcement button. And it's a good way to hide all of your stitches. Okay. And this is like an old vintage like fabric button with metal around the outside. I am not sure how this is going to go. We're going to try. Because <laughs> I don't know if it's metal through and through. No, it's not. Okay, it's like a Dorset button kind of 
fabric in the middle, which is great. It's very thick fabric though, so it's a little tricky. I use my glass mat to just push it up. <laughs> I'm going to get about four stitches in there to hold that on there. Three. <laughs> one to go, one to go. And we'll be done with this one. We'll go into the easier buttons. Yeah, you gotta get in a really specific area on here to get this to go through. There we go. Because I think there's probably like a metal bar that runs through this somewhere. If I can feel my needle kind of pushing back, like, no, I can't. Okay, so that's that one on. Now I have this little shell button. I'm gonna put it closer to where my stitches are down here. Just pop my needle through. I'm not even going to worry about the thread on the back and the spacing there. Not even a little concerned. You could be super neat, but like I said, this journal's for me. And I like all this kind of wabi-sabi kind of thing, you know? It's kind of nice. So I'll remember that I really enjoyed this project and it was a relaxing one. Okay. One more to go. Um, this is like another of those, it's like a vintage button with sort of a little flower pattern. It's pretty cute, a little brown button. And I'll pop that one right here. There we go. And then we'll be all done with hand sewing, I think. I can't remember if there's any with the next page. I don't think so. going to head back this direction underneath the fabric here and now I could actually just kind of slow stitch a few stitches around that long thread that stretches in between just to kind of make it look a little more intentional there we go and then we'll just make some knots So I think that that is everything I have to do with this one. It's just the two tabs. Yep. All right. That's 345354. So let's set this one aside with this one. Yeah. And now we'll look at the next page, which is also the last page. Um, and we'll work on that one next. So this is pages one, two, 55 and 56. So this journal will be 56 pages in total. Um, so this is on ledger paper. Uh, page one is a corner pocket that's made with a photo. Um, if you don't have a vintage photo, which I do, I have this adorable little boy. This is a July 1955 original photograph. I attached it to some card stock and I stitched around it and inked around it. My piece of ledger was actually an old vintage one that was written on like 1961, 62. Um, so yeah, it's cool. I also have these little pieces of cellophane tape all over it and I just left it there because I think it's great. 
So you make a corner pocket, um, which you which you glue on here. And um, Nancy actually used instead of using a vintage photo this time, she used like a cutout of um, like a, a vintage you know image from a book of a woman. Um, then it's going to get stuffed with. Um, this tag so this tag is a collaged um you know tag that's thin enough to fit in your pocket on your page um nancy had collaged envelopes that she used like different kinds of old paper on i just kind of made a couple of scrap tags this morning um on book page and backed them stitched around them then um the other part of the brief is to add some lace or something up top. I added this sequin kind of um, tulle fabric. And then you put a brad here just for decoration. In this one, it's a little bit um, hidden because like the sequins are really like present. Then you take um, a smaller card or ticket or something small. And um, you just kind of back it with something strong like cardstock to make a tuck spot on the front of the tag. I had this little page called the Gospel of Despair. <laughs> it's about astronomers and yeah. So then you eventually get a piece of ephemera that you tuck in there. I used an old CB radio card that I had hanging around. So just a piece of like original ephemera then that tucks right in the front this is the first page so it's pretty cool um, to have such a nicely decorated front page then for the next page page two um, we do a paper cluster which um, you can mass make these basically a lot of people make them I think most journalers make them it's a good way to use up your scraps you just kind of take random pieces like you could use something like this some music and some whatever leftover scrap of paper whatever and just rip it and make clusters glue them together stitch them together um, and so there's one there and then she put a focal point she used like um, a, a vintage image of like a Victorian woman from a, a magazine that she backed with cardstock and made it nice and firm and she glued that down. I had this little guy. I have a whole uh, bunch of these. They're vintage Halloween um, like straw paper um, Halloween decor and I love these little guys and like I don't have a lot of opportunities to use them so I put one in here because I love him. Then on page 55 very easy you just paper clip a vintage photo so my vintage photo for this one is this guy he's like a farmer he's an older man in a in a sun hat and there's another person here possibly his wife um they both have sun hats on and it looks like she's got like a blazer on and they're standing in like a field of um flowers and I can't remember what are the name of those flowers? The big tall gladiolas. Yeah, so this gladiolas here. So flower farmers. And then on the back page, page 56, um, a vintage wallpaper pocket is what's recommended. Um, this is wallpaper. I don't know the age of it, but I had it, so I used it. Um, and then you attach a label to the top of the, um, the pocket and you stitch it on and then stitch the whole thing onto the paper. Then um, put a tag inside. So Nancy had a cool tag. It was like um she found it, I think, in like a World War I tin. So it's like an old, old tag. And it was just a brown tag and she just left it plain. I didn't have anything like that. So I wanted to do something different and weird and kind of cool. So I used one of these. Um, this was an index card, like the lettered ones from Rolodex. But it didn't have like the Rolodex cutouts or anything. I just chopped a little off the side to make sure it would fit. And then turned it into a tag by snipping off both corners. And I'm going to do that in the next journal. So I'll show you. And it just makes a nice flat tag. So that is that. So that, let's make this. I've got my supplies here. <laughs> so where's my basket? Right here. Okay. So first thing, I used a different page of ledger this time. I'm using the green ledger. I used the, my last piece of that interesting vintage ledger. So again, we have to um, chop this down to the size of the template. So I'm gonna grab the template here and I'll just fold, what side do we want to use? Do we want this? Probably not because we really need this page to be um, a little sturdier because I have to attach things to it. 
so let's just double check yeah that's where we would want it folded but that's not straight so let's line this up a little bit better here this line and this line good then are we is that a little better yeah that's better okay I think probably the edge of that isn't completely straight. There we are. Now we're good. So then I've got to trim this way and then the other way. So I'll just move this out of the way and get my paper trimmer. measure again against this there we go get the template out of here all right so here is our ledger paper so um I think yeah, she worked on the outside kind of first because it's the more complicated side of things. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work on the, the more complicated page, this one, which is actually page one. So I need my vintage photo, which is this. Look at this cute little sweet pea, this little girl. Isn't she adorable? And she's standing in front of like... Um, like a flower garden, a huge flower garden with maybe like corn in the back and a forest behind it. And she has a little shirred dress on and cute little curled, little curls in her hair. Oh my gosh, so cute. So that we will use. And then I have a piece of cardstock I'm going to back it on. I'm going to stitch it. Um, so let's make that first. So set our paper aside, set it back here. And then um, I'm just going to superficially glue this down. And then um, I need to trim it again with the other one. make sure that we have this on there straight because if I do it straight I won't have to trim this edge as much sorry if I'm off camera I'm just trying to straighten up this edge make sure that it's aligned properly on this one side there we go that's better because then I don't have to cut all these edges just the two Just gonna sort of eyeball and make sure we have about the same amount of space on both sides of the picture, leaving enough room that I can throw some stitches in there. regular straight stitch if my machine's a little loud I have a thicker needle in it and 
um, because I had a mishap with my other thin needle and I've got to put another thin needle in my machine because um, paper likes a nice thin sharp needle to go through it easily right so thicker the needle the more strain it kind of the more kind of bashing into anything like cardstock that it will do and that's what it was just doing <laughs> so let me grab my anchor here I'm just gonna ink around the edges of this done. Now paper is here. So this is the right side here. So then we're going to glue this on. The side. So we're just going to put glue on the two, the bottom and the outermost sides, like an L. And I want to keep the numbers intact, so I'm going to just put this in ever so slightly here. And just give it a little press. Okay, and then we'll let that dry and move on to the tag that's got to go inside there, because that's kind of the next most complex part of it all. So let me grab the supplies for that. So I already made a tag, just a collage, or like the collage part of it. That's what I'm going to use for the top. Um, then I've got this card that I'm going to use to hold the ephemera. And I didn't pick out a piece of ephemera yet. But I'll probably try to use um, something from my basket of things here. Like a little piece of something that's not too thick. Because this book's getting a little bit chunkaroo. Thick, thick. The Kodak film envelope. We have. Oh my goodness. There's that card I was looking for days ago. <sighs> That's okay. It'll get used in the next journal. Um, not that. Oh, here we go. Another CB card. CB identification card. We'll use that. So, but we'll just set it aside for a minute and we'll assemble this first. Um, so first thing that we need to do, so I just made this this morning. I just literally just took scraps and collaged on a book page. So what we need to do first, I think, is attach this um, and the brad. So what I want to do I don't even know if this needs a brad, to be honest, because it's got this. And once again, it kind of hides the brad. So I'm getting a little more decadent here with my lace that I'm adding to the top. Um, Nancy was using like just regular nice lace, like nothing crazy. So um, I'm not going to add a brad. It would look nice to add a brad if you had like... Um, you know, like just a plain, like regular piece of like, you know, this kind of white lace, like just a regular piece of lace. But because I'm using like an applique um, from a vintage crochet piece, I'm just going to use that. You don't need the brad. But if you are attaching the brad, just FYI, you just poke a little hole with your awl to attach the, like to poke the brad through and then um, do it before you put your backing on because then you can hide. You want to get your brad, like the little feet part at the back, get them as flat as possible and then you can hide them underneath your backing paper and then um, stitch everything together. Okay, so now we're going to do the stitching. Uh -huh. So I'm going to have most of this hang down the front, I think. Uh -huh. I'm just going to start at this top corner. to 
reposition my card under here. There we go. The top is the trickiest piece because the the um, the foot of the machine wants to sit on top of that rosette and uh, not move properly. just came to a realization guys <laughs> so I sewed this on the bottom not the top and it needs to be on the top it only matters because there's birds here ah you know what it's okay because we can always cover them up it's a lot easier than undoing the stitching for this so let me grab Always have things handy to cover your own boo-boos. So let me just see what I have here. I have a sparrow. Uh, actually, that's a frog bird, not a sparrow. Um, let's just grab some birds here that I have kind of fussy, torn. We might need a couple birds to do this big job. So this one could cover maybe the owl's head. Then, this one could cover our two little friends down here maybe, or I might just need to use some paper to cover them. Yeah, let's get a piece of paper. Just a bit of scrap. It's got some scrap here and we'll just uh, improvise. And let's choose what bird we want to use. Um, Let's see. I think I like that frog bird, but I think I'm going to go with the head, the, the bird head. Let me just pack away these babies. It wouldn't be me if I didn't do something funny and silly <laughs> and mess things up a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the edge of the stitches because I don't really want to cover them a whole lot. Okay, then I might just plunk the other side of this here because it's covered in glue, so why not? Now our bird. Just to cover our owl here. There. And I will just do a little, a little bit of inking. There we go. I'm just going to ink the back up here. Okay, so that's that. And then I just remembered, you know what? This would not have even probably mattered because we still need to attach this. <laughs> Why do I forget everything? I just want to read what this says. Uh -huh. Okay. So I don't really want to cover the bird's head. I want to snip this to just this big maybe. And then we don't lose our bird. Yay. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay, so now this is the part where we're going to add the little card on the front to this um, to hold that piece of ephemera. So let's just pull this right up here again. Um, I could have stitched this on when I was stitching around the tag. I just remembered that, but that's okay. <clears throat> let's just line that up. There we go. 
Okay, so now we've got our little tag on the front, or our little card on the front to hold a piece of ephemera. And I was thinking it would be nice to use this super cute um, CB tag because it's a cool piece of vintage ephemera. And we'll see if that fits in the pocket okay and doesn't disrupt the width of the ledger. I didn't run my ruler under here. I might need to do that. Yeah, I do. I always have to run my ruler underneath pockets like this that I glue with art glitter glue because I always manage to get a little bit of squeeze out, extra squeeze out that you don't want. Um, let's see. Oops, I just... Oh, silly me. Let's just reapply a little bit of glue. I got a little cuckoo with my glue, or my, uh, my ruler. Okay, let's let that dry again. Um, now, I just want to see, though, like, theoretically, this would sit like this. So I still think it might be a little wide, at least this part. This is fine. This is totally fine. So I need to just clip this down a little bit, which is totally okay, because we're not cutting anything major off here. Just a little bit. That should do it. Okay. Yeah, so we want it to fit. Yeah, that's better. So now it fits within the confines of the card. So let's just let this dry again just for a little bit. And um, now next what we'll do is... Um, oops. Let me just clip that back on here. Okay. Next we'll do this inside pocket, which is on the other page here. So that's actually page 56. And I have a little bit of prep work I gotta do for this. Um, so Nancy uses vintage wallpaper for this. I'm going to actually use vintage wrapping paper And I just have to back it to make it a little sturdier. And I also just want to measure how wide we're allowed to go here. So about, let's say, there. stock and then probably about like this so we want to get that one flower on there for sure Now the other thing we want to do um, with this pocket, first we'll just make sure it looks it looks right, yeah, right size, good, is um, we want a label to go on the top, like here on the prototype. Um, and I have a label, I'm using up my little labels that I made myself, um, and so it's just going to kind of go up in the, in the corner like that, but it's going to go above it a little bit so we'll just put a little little glue here just a tiny bit because we're going to stitch it on there we go 
so let's set this tag aside because it actually can't go in yet either because we have to stitch this on still. So now I'm just going to stitch this tag on. You're just doing the two sides and the bottom. Oh, wait, no. First I want to put some stitches here. <laughs> put some stitches here just for some decoration purposes then I'll just line the card up here the nice thing about ledger is you can use the lines on the paper as your guides for straightness we're good all right so then we'll put the tag in this pocket as well and I have to make it real quick this time it's the letter B so again these are just like little file folder cards nothing too special and then I'm just going to trim like a bit off the side so that it fits in there properly in that pocket just double check and make sure when it does so then I just take the top here snip the corner off then use it as a guide to get the same angle on your other corner just in case you haven't seen this uh, before lots of people do it <laughs> so there we go that's just a simple tag super cute though okay so now flip this over and I'll do the easy one here, which is our next vintage photo. And I need a paper clip. Um, okay, so the next vintage photo is so cute. I'm guessing, like, I don't know. These women look like they're from, like, the 1920s. And they're just, like, all sitting on a blanket on the side of, like, a road or a driveway there's like I think three women and one man and they've got a paper and one's making a funny face and one's looking at the camera it's just a lovely old original photograph so that's what we do with um page number 55 we just clip a vintage photo with a paper clip so that's on there. Now we've got to make the cluster here um I didn't make one ahead of time so let me just grab some scraps and I'll just show you quickly how to make a cluster in case you've never made one before. Um, so I'll just start with a piece of scrap um, paper. I think I have a mass making video on how to make these. And then I'll grab a nice piece of this really old ledger paper here from a handwritten ledger and then maybe a scrap of this blue um, and I'll just get my what's left of my glue book I'm almost through another glue book it's not exciting <laughs> so the way that I make these is I like to just um, glue 
down onto a piece of glue book paper because why not? There we go. And then you can um, you can do some stitching over these, like fancy decorative stitches or whatever you like. But that essentially is a cluster. Then I just um, I do a whole bunch on one page typically, and I just tear around them like this. So you just get a nice flat cluster. with some like page background and there you go and then you can stitch on top but I'm not going to not for this anyways don't need to because my um my focal point is um quite large so I think it will cover the stitching anyways so then we just pop that right down here and then this time my focal point that I'm using is actually um, a relatively large image. It's a Kate Greenaway illustration from a book. And I'm going to just glue her down. we're done we're done we're done all right let me just double check we we did everything pages one two this is ledger photo corner pocket with a collage tall journal tag lease on top with a brad we didn't use the brad this time i did in this one though um doo -doo -doo, back the card with a label out of small card tuck with ephemera yes we did that okay success and then this piece in here 56 which is over here vintage wallpaper pocket with label put a thin tag inside page two is a paper cluster with a focal point page 55 paper clip uh vintage photo we are good we finished we're done okay so that those are the last two pages of this journal and i'm actually glad because i think it's going to be chunky chunky let's go grab the journals they're right here um so let me grab the first one and we will pop these on. Tomorrow we make the covers, so I'm excited about that. So let's plunk, plunk this right in here and reattach my, yay, look how cute. This is gonna be so fun. And the other one, chunksy number two. Okay, let me put this on here, okay, yeah. Good. Okay, so that is both journals. Um, this is all the pages. Lots and lots of fun ephemera. These are stuffed, awesome journals. And I'm so excited to have them for my two camping trips this year. I'm going to definitely steal away the time and uh, make some nice memories writing in these. And so tomorrow is um, cover day. We're going to make the covers for these. So I don't even know what it's going to be and I'm excited to find out. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. I will link Nancy's um, make along channel below. The cool thing is if you haven't jumped in yet, you know, you can still follow along because the videos will be there forever. Um, and thanks again for joining me for this fun. And I will be back probably tomorrow with something. We're starting a new journal project um, and some other things. So thanks again. Um, all my social media information is down below. Have a good day. Bye for now.